The Pulse School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Saskatchewan Pulse Growers and Nodulator XL. Okay, so we're here at Scott Field Day and I'm with Eric Johnson and we're standing in front of some kind of old school technology. We're in front of a rotary hoe and you're using it in lentils right now? I am. Uh, we've been working with the rotary hoe for quite a while. Uh, I got started uh, using it in the early 2000s. Uh, I was doing uh, weed control and organic production and we did a lot of post-emergence harrowing in uh, one of the challenges we had, uh, it would work pretty good with small weeds in, in pulses and, and uh, cereals, but one of the challenges we had was crop residue. And uh, if there was any crop residue, the harrows would plug and we'd, we'd cause a lot of crop damage. So I was looking for an implement that I could use that would uh, provide some weed control, but also could work in, um, in fairly high levels of crop residue. So. Uh, I'd read about the Mintel rotary hoe and we were able to purchase one and I started working on it, with it and it was ended up being one of the better uh, implements for uh, broadleaf weed control in organic production, uh, particularly if we wanted to minimize tillage. So um, when I started with the organic work I, I really wanted to see if we could integrate some of those practices with you know other forms of weed control and uh, I got thinking in terms of problems with uh, resistant weeds in crops like lentils, like resistant kochia and uh, ALS and group two resistant kochia, for example. And uh, if let's say we lost most of our herbicides and we had to rely on, strictly on a herbicide like uh, an older herbicide like Edge or, or trifluralin. And um, so I got thinking, well, perhaps maybe the rotary hoe would um, help ethylfluralin or trifluralin in a couple of ways. First of all, uh, if we applied the product in the fall and we did a rotary hoeing, we wouldn't disturb too much residue because I find that it, it does maintain residue on the surface. So we might give it some incorporation. We know a little bit of an incorporation does help and with the control of a lot of uh, weeds like cleavers and things like that. And the following thing that I learned in terms of the um, the organic work is that perhaps if there was some escapes that if we went back in the spring and rotary hoed just as the weeds were emerging we could actually maybe control some of those escapes. So that was kind of the hypothesis that we tried to test over the last three or four years and I'm working with Dr. Steve Shirtliff on this. And what have you seen in terms of the crop, like how does it handle this uh, rotary hoe? Well the crop is pretty tolerant to it and we looked at uh, stages, a number of stages. We went from just at ground crack to very close to flowering and we found it was quite tolerant to it. Now it depends a little bit, if the soil is quite wet we can get some fair injury so we, we don't want to do it when the soils are, are too wet. But for the most part crop tolerance was quite good with it and uh, we do like to seed at a heavier seeding rate so in this trial for example we will seed at 260 seeds per square meter instead of 130 seeds per square meter so that helps a little bit in terms of uh, if you do lose a few plants and then the, the higher seeding rate also helps in terms of uh, crop competition or weed competition as well. Was there an ideal stage between all of those? That were, yes, that were best? actually uh, there is. And you should really focus on the stage of the weeds. So the, the weeds have to be extremely small. And we like to even say that they're in the white thread stage. So they're just poking out of the ground. And uh, if you pull the top part of the soil back, you'll see the little the little threads just about to emerge and that's perfect. But uh, if they're in the cotyledon stage, you'll, you'll also still control them. If they start to get true leaves, then you'll, you'll end up with it. So you really should uh, focus on, on the, the weeds more than the crop stage. So it would mostly be annual weeds that you would be killing then? Yes, it would be, it's all annual weeds. It has no effect on perennial weeds whatsoever. And, and small seeded annual weeds, it's not effective on wild oats, for example. The, it's just, wild oats are just too well anchored and we can't pull those out of the ground or remove them out of the ground. So you've had some pretty good luck with kochia and narrowleaf hawksbeard? Yes, we have. Um, 
In terms of the kochia, we don't have too, many, too much kochia on the, on the uh, plots here, but generally what we found is we're getting in 70-80% control with the edge by itself, uh, but we can get that well over 90 if we add the fall and spring uh, rotary hoeing. So we don't always get significant differences, we get visual differences and we get certainly differences in terms of the amount of weed biomass. And uh, so if you, you know, you're still re reducing the number of uh, plants, reducing the seed load, the amount of seed return. So we are finding some synergism or not necessarily synergism, but some additive control by adding the uh, rotary hoe on top of the, uh, of the herbicide application. So the full uh, rotary hoe would be to incorporate the edge? That's right. It would be to get those leaves? That's that, that escaped basically, yeah. Right. So it's, yeah, it's, a, it's kind of an integrated approach we're looking at, higher seeding rates, applying a product like edge, a soil active product, um, doing incorporation without causing too much impact in terms of uh, destroying residue, just enough to get it covered and, and also to control any fall germinating weeds. Uh, it can do that as well. And then in the spring, yes, we're coming back mainly to control any uh, broadleaf weeds that, that do escape. And we, we the, interesting enough, the, the ethylfluorolin doesn't have much effect on, uh, on narrowleaf hawksbeard, but we found that the early um, rotary hoeing actually did a pretty nice job on it this year. So yeah. what speed would you be running the rotary hoe at? Okay, so the, the, uh, the faster we go, basically, the better it works almost. So the way you, you cause more disturbance is actually to go fast. And, and the optimum speed, speed is about 10 miles an hour, 9 to 10 miles an hour, 12 kilometers an hour. So you, it's, it's not um, something that would take a farmer a lot of time. I mean, we'd have to get larger pieces of equipment. and. Uh, but you can cover a lot of, of soil with it uh, in a short period of time. So that's one nice thing. You can work very fast. And are you using it in other pulses as well as lentils? Yes, it will, we've tested it in um, lentils, we've tested it in chickpeas, and we've also tested it in, uh, in peas. Chickpeas uh, will tolerate it, but I'm a little concerned that it'll, uh, it'll may, may, it may worsen disease in it. Uh, we didn't have really high disease problems in the years we tested it, but just by looking at it afterwards, I think I, I, I'm not very comfortable doing it. In, just it, from the stress of, of being hit by it? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I think it's just wounding it enough that you've got some entry for, for disease organisms. Uh, peas, though, are quite tolerant, and yeah, you could use it in peas as well. So how many years is this study? Uh, this is its third year, and we've done it at uh, uh, two locations, so we have six. I, I think I might repeat it one more uh, just to to get a little more confident in the information. You just like driving the... If we do, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, you know, it's, it is old technology and uh, maybe or older technology and I don't think that it has an immediate application. I wouldn't recommend farmers going out and buying a, a rotary hoe. But uh, if you look down the future and we run out of herbicide options, this, this may be a system that could be adopted. Mm -hmm.